Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jessica Abernathy, and with me today is Trisha Montgomery, and you are listening to Pets Our Family. Hello. Hi. At least I'm not laughing this time, because usually (laughs) you have me laughing before we push play. (laughs) That's because we haven't been talking that much before. I think had we spent even a few moments prior to the taping, we would be laughing, because that is our M.O. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Another week has gone by. I can't believe this. It is time. It's just flying. I don't know where it goes. I promise you. It's like there and then it's gone. Uh-huh. And I don't know. The older you get, they told us when we were young, the older you get, the faster it goes. And I was like, uh-uh. Now it's yeah. like, Phew. There you go, yeah. bringing up that that old thing that we are very old. We're, um, you know, <laughs> I I think I'm going to be applying for whatever uh, assistance I can get, putting me out to pasture and discarding me away. <laughs> you know, it's funny though because I'm. We started watching um, I, Apple TV's got that new show, um, Masters of the Air. Have oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so I, I yeah, I've watched them all so far, and it's really, really Stop. good. And, yeah, okay. I like it. I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but as I'm watching it, I keep looking at, them, at the, the the these guys that are going to war for World War II, and I keep going. They're like 12 years old. They're like 18. They, uh, you know, yeah, I'm like, like, and they're sergeants like, and corals. It's, and majors. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, wait, you're not even old enough to tie your shoes, let alone be a doctor. I'm like, I'm I know so that. sorry. I know that. I, yeah, that's my, what dad I'm, that's, my dad yeah. served. That's why my, I, I love like things like Band of Brothers and the Pacific and all. It's just like I find it just beautiful, just understanding and, and, and recounting through others' eyes that type of uh, of what they went through. Gosh, I can't wait to watch more. But they are 12. So and I'm like, I've hit, yeah, I've hit that age where I'm like, everybody looks so young. And I'm like, oh, my God. Now I get it when everybody kept telling me, you're so young. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm 25. What are you talking about? Now I get it. Now you get it. Can we uh, can we start using filters so we look younger? <laughs> sure. Justin, get on that. We need filters to make us look younger. Justin. No, honestly, that makes me crazy. When I see somebody who I know and then they use the filters and it's like, you really don't look like that, but okay. If you're going there, go there. I mean, it just, it, I, I find it fascinating. I find it, I, I, you know, you're going to, this is what you get. I mean, what you, you know, I just, I'm, you see somebody in person, you're like, wait a minute, you didn't look like that in your uh, Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> it's called catfishing. <laughs> it, it is. It is. I, but wait, you just brought up a, 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 like a special. We've been watching Griselda, which is oh, that. I haven't uh, seen that yet. Oh my gosh, you've got to watch that. It is based upon this. I guess she was the the the, the cocaine godmother in in Miami, and just crazy. And now they're glorifying her, you know, and just all these gunning downs in the cocaine industry and all kinds of things like that. And so, yeah, her son. I think her youngest son now has like a. Pure Blanco, I'm giving you a shout out because I have been watching your, your this up. It's crazy. Fascinated by that though. Fascinated. That was a time. I was alive during that time. You know? <laughs> I yeah, was alive. I, was I, was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what time zone or time time zone. I don't know what era that 70, was in. Seventy, hmm. I think 73, 78, something like that. So definitely alive, but it was just you know I don't think it was that. Yeah, not that, not that well, old yet. So speaking of like going through times and and time, we have a very special guest on the podcast today and somebody that is very near and dear to your heart. And I think to our listeners' hearts as well, because they've been hearing so much about them. Who, Jessica, who do we have on today on this podcast? We are going to have Leroy on today. So he's going to join us today and tell us a little bit about you know, our family history with animals and all that fun stuff. And I guarantee you it'll be interesting because he's a character. <laughs> That's all I have to say. He's a character, you know, and uh, I had, a, I, I had to warn him <laughs> stuff not to wait. say. <laughs> I cannot wait to meet him because you brought so much. I mean, I've seen pictures of him, but <laughs> your words and these podcasts and everything you have brought life to him and I wonder you know just I'm I'm looking forward to hearing uh I'm I'm looking forward to talking to him I really am 
Oh, God. Yep, it'll be fun. So let me go, go, go get him. Let's bring him in. All right. So hi, everybody, and welcome. And as you can see, I have my parents on. My mom decided to join, too. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Oh, so, Jessica parents, how are you guys? We're just we're absolutely ducky, peachy keen, tickety boo. Couldn't hardly be any better unless we were all on our way to Moab. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with hearing that all the time, Trisha. I actually have that tattooed on my body, if you could believe that. Nobody I, knows that, but I have that tattooed on me. You do. <laughs> I do. I have Ducky Peachy King, Tickety Boo. Couldn't be any better unless I was at Moab with my dad. I have that tattooed on me. Wow. I did not know that. And I would imagine our, uh, our, our listeners did not know that either. Would you, I don't know, maybe I'm not going to ask where it is or if you want to show it to us. So, it's right here on my wrist. I, I, <laughs> it is my place to awesome. get it to my heart. Yeah. Okay. It is presentable. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Guy, I have heard so much about you all, and I feel that I am living vicariously through Jessica's life with you, with your, with you all. Um, my mom and dad are no longer with us. Um, they did pass away. Very sad. So um, I'm going to call you dad and mom. So here we go. I'm just another member of your family. It sounds like a winner to me, Trish. You're more than one. But you <laughs> must, chicken. you must, though, if you're a member of the family, you must go to Moab. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Yep, it's a it's a rite of passage. We have we figured if we talked about him enough, we might as well have everybody know who he is. So you get to, you get to, yeah, you get to meet Leroy and and his top hat, which he always has on. And I didn't realize you had a gray one. I thought you only had a black one. No, the gray one is my favorite color. I don't, oh, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't get crazy here. Gray. It's a neutral color, right? Oh, okay. My bad. I, I really did. I, I thought black was I, neutral. I, I, crazy. I just want to compliment your lovely mom in the background there too. So let's not forget about her. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we, we talk about your people a lot, mom. <laughs> As I reference the people of the crazy family and me, we talk about them a lot. Sorry. Oh my gosh. So there are some fascinating stories coming out of your family, guys. I want to, I want to hear some of these. So we're just a perfectly normal family who does crazy things. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to beg to differ on that one. I'm going to beg to differ. I don't think, I mean, we're not that normal. I hate to say that dad, but so so my question to you, Dad, was what was your first animal that you remember having, especially with Grandma and Ben? Oh, uh, we had we had a the first dog that I remember us having was a, a dog named Dutch. And I'll be real honest with you, I was a young boy, maybe, you know, maybe 10, 12, something like that. And I just remember we had a dog named Dutch, and then he wasn't there anymore. And I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was, I, what happened to him or whatever. But but as a kid, no, I I really didn't have any dogs. I mean, mom, mom, my mother, she was she was crazier than a loon, man. And we were always going a hundred miles an hour. We didn't have time for dogs or cats or anything like that. She had later on. She had some some dogs that she had. I mean, she had a full bred poodle. You know what I mean? And. Uh, Actually, it was a good dog. You know what I mean? And she had that stupid monkey for a while. Thank God I was gone. I was, I, I mean, I, who See, there you go. Right? Okay. You just claimed that we were normal. <laughs> and you have a monkey. You have a monkey. <laughs> like a monkey. My grandmother had a monkey. <laughs> yeah. That's I, not I normal, she Dad. had the stupid monkey from. I mean, she was always hustling some, some kind of deal someplace. But, but the... But the monkey, I don't know where the monkey comes from. I, I, I got to tell you a little bit about my mom here. Just, just, just <laughs> here, you know, we are a normal person, man. My favorite thing about my mom that I remember, absolutely remember, was that mom never bought a Christmas tree until Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is oh, when she wow. bought Christmas because she would go out and hustle people. She'd get it for next to nothing. And then she would get a Christmas tree. She did that all the whole, the whole time I was growing up. She was always wow. hustling something, man. 
So she, you know, I got a good teacher there. I had a really good teacher. Her parents, people just went out in the woods and got one, man. <laughs> just cut it, down. <laughs> cut it out in the woods. Yeah. Well, she lived in the woods. There was just trees everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> so why not go get a tree? You know, why do you pay somebody for a tree? Besides, I don't think anybody even sold a tree in Maine, did they? No, I don't think nah, so. no, 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 I think everybody had a tree. Yeah. Hey, multiple, there's no. Oh, I'm sorry. There's I'm sorry. I'm running off of the dog. You guys yeah. got it. Well, from a dog standpoint and a cat standpoint, we never had cats at all um, as a kid. I don't know. You had, you had dogs and cats, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What did um, you have? The only one I remember yeah, was we, Bobo. We, well, yeah. And then we had a couple more beagles before that. We had cats with no tails. So we oh, had cats with what no tails. To them? Yeah, yeah, what happened to them? And that was normal. They were born that way. <laughs> they were born tailless? Who's talking they were about really me? born tailless? Yeah, I'm oh. thinking that's not normal, Mom. <laughs> I'm once again, that's not normal, Mom. Cat, a new breed of cat, a tailless right? cat. Uh, uh, I, see, they're proving to you that normal so what was your first animal that you guys got when you were married what was your first animal oh. you guys got because i knew we always grew up with animals yeah we did we we, we got an apartment and so we being smart people <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> we thought we'd get a really small dog right we bought that that chihuahua right oh, what was yeah. his name <laughs> What was his name? I can't remember now. <laughs> Tippy or Toto? Jaws. No, it was the Chihuahua. And, and no, I called it Jaws because it bit everybody. Well, it did. Well, you, that's because you saw him because we wound up giving him to her grandparents. You know what I mean? No, it did. Because <laughs> it bit everybody except for Grandma, uh, Grandma Eastler. She, it yeah. only liked Grammy Eastler. That's the reason Grammy Eastler got it because it bit yeah. everybody. And we, we bought the hated stupid- it. We bought that little dog, and I don't know why we bought that dog other than we wanted to be normal with a, a pet. And and we had an apartment, and we had a bunch of, bunch of old old German people is where we had the apartment at, and they hated animals. They were farmed. I mean, I mean, when I say hated animals, they hated animals in the house. They liked the animals on the farm, but to have them in the house it was just an absolutely foreign thing to them. And that's why we wound up giving the dog to my my her grandparents. As a matter of fact. Because it bit rehome the dog. Everybody <laughs> and, and, and our landlords didn't like the dog. And what do we have? Ah, ah. The next move was we got the sheep dog, right? Yep. Oh, sheep dog. Yep. Love, love my sheep dog, man. That was Tanya was the first first sheep dog we had. Old English sheep dog. Yeah. Old English sheep dog yep. and a dog. What a what a horrible mix. A sheep dog and a and a dachshund. and a dachshund. Sheepdog was great. The dachshund was just a pain in the butt, man. A little pain. You know what I mean? I agree. We had sheepdogs too. Ours was the dirty Duke of Bug Tussle. And we called him Bucky for short. And it could never see. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did you have to? Did yeah. You, did you take once a year, go up and clip them all off? Did you, did you do that? I I did not do that at all, but I remember we would take him on family vacations and we would go like on, on bridges and he would be like hogging. We like we had a VW at the time and he would hog the whole the whole we had three three girls and, and your parents, you know, or mom and dad. And then we had Bucky and then he would like lean down every time there was a bridge. So anyway, Bucky, Dirty Duke of Bug Tussle. Dirty Duke of Bug That's a name. I know. Well, Duchess, Duchess, uh, twin, we named it, it was a purebred, so we named it, like you said, I think it was Trendicilla Duchess of someplace, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what the, the official name on the on the, the pedigree was, Trendicilla Duchess of someplace, and I can't remember where the someplace. I love but, that. But, right? but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm with you, Trish, man. I, I love that English shape dog. That shape dog was just really a super dog. I mean, it was. And they're so cuddly. They're yes. cuddly and they love you. Yes, yes, and they're they're playful and they're friendly and and they just do a whole lot of nice things. But they were a handful to keep clean, like you said, man. Yeah, I mean, definitely what's so. Favorite? Yeah, and her favorite food was spaghetti. Oh God, yeah. Can, can, <laughs> can you imagine 
a dog eating a plate full of spaghetti, especially an old English sheepdog, the whole face was just one big red blob, man. And we'd spend the next half an hour wiping all that spaghetti off oh, our face. It's like Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. And, and the, the other mistake that we made, Marion and I made, there, 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 we started somewhere along the line. We gave the dog a, a treat of an ice cube. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, it, and, and the dog turned into a junkie on ice cubes. You know what I mean? But she couldn't go to the refrigerator without having to give, jumping in there and pulling out an ice cube and give the dog. Because he was, she was sitting there just waiting patiently to get that ice cube. And it was crazy. It was, but she was a good dog. Good dog, man. <laughs> All our dogs were addicted to ice cubes and, and popcorn. You couldn't. You couldn't pop Ooh. popcorn, and you couldn't, and you couldn't open the refrigerator door because you had to give popcorn or ice cubes. All of our dogs were addicted to both. All and, of and, them. And it was probably a function of we were cheap, you know what I mean, <laughs> rather than going by <laughs> buying cheap, good, good, good treats. I mean, ice cubes. You just put them in the refrigerator, and you got ice cubes. You know what I mean? It's water out of the tray, but it worked. It worked. I mean, the dogs loved the treats, man. They were they were happy it's as all. On a prison program. Well, no food today. We're just going to give you popcorn and we're going to give you ice. And that's it. The dogs loved it, man. And then those dogs, man, they, were, they were all over the refrigerator every time we got to it, man. All over. And like Marion said, man, you try to, try to watch TV at night and have some popcorn. Uh, you're having dogs all over the place because of the popcorn, man. It's craziness. I mean, yeah. You got a hundred pound fur ball licking, just like laying on you, trying to get a piece of popcorn. <laughs> um, and we wound up getting a second sheep dog, Trisha. Her name was uh, Misty. A second one, it, yeah. she liked to. She used to. She liked to pick my mom's strawberries out of her strawberry garden, and she would she would put, pick all her strawberries, <laughs> and then yeah. then she'd run away, <laughs> and yeah. she'd stand like. At the end of like at the end of the block, which is like twenty acres away, and she'd turn around and just sit there and look at my mom like, ha, ha, you can't get me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's she, true. <laughs> she would just sit there and she'd wait for my dad or I to come, but she would just sit there and egg my mother on. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Oh, she, yeah, she was funny. Yep. And then we had Bubba too. Bubba was the other one. Oh, I love the name Bubba. Dog. Bubba the Wonder Dog. That guy, that dog was the best dog I ever. It was um, I don't even know what it was. It was. Uh, he was a purebred. He was a purebred lab. Purebred oh, lab. But, but it was a purebred lab. But you would swear to swear that it was a a Doberman because it had all the coloring of a Doberman and some of the features. But it was a purebred lab. Now I don't know where we got him got him from. We got him from the we got him from the vet. Miss Leslie was working there at the vet office and um oh, a litter nice. yeah, a litter. There was a, a breeder that had a litter of puppies and she had two black, two yellows, and two chocolates, and then Bubba. And Bubba yeah. came out and he looked like a Rottweiler. He had all the Rottweiler markings and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And she the breeder said to euthanize him because he was worthless because of his markings. Oh, yeah, she, yep. they they said euthanize him. They were like, just euthanize him. He's worthless. And so yeah. Miss Leslie, which is a family friend, called um, my mom and dad and said, they're going to euthanize this dog. It's He's a puppy. And she's like, can you come get him? <laughs> and they were like, the vet office said he's $75 because we had to cover the expenses of his birth. Off my mother goes. And we got a puppy. <laughs> I love you for doing that. I love that. I that makes me smile. We yeah. love that dog. I mean that that dog was beyond a doubt the the best dog we ever had. Uh, the one thing I did do right was was and and I recommend this to anybody who's out there with a dog is go to a professional trainer and and we took him to a professional trainer and 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 went through the whole thing and man he was after that he was absolutely golden man. I mean. He would walk by me. He would heal all the time. I could take him anywhere I wanted to without a leash. Yeah. And that was just really a blessing. You know what I mean? We, we, were, we, we were, took Misty there. We took Misty to professional trainers. 
Yeah, but she was still a sheepdog, man. <laughs> Sheepdogs are crazy. All right. She, was, she, <laughs> defunct, she defunct basic three times. And then we asked, <laughs> they, when we were asked not, we, she did. She flunked basic three times. And they just told us not to worry about it. <laughs> You just have to sit. Are you basically in the doghouse when you when you flunk basic training? Do you just have to sit to the side while everyone else graduates, no. or what actually happens when you fail or flunk basic you training? You basically sit there and watch everybody else get diplomas. How sad must that be for the? You're hurting the feelings of the dog. Think about that. You know, you just have to sit there. You know, and that I can just. How sad is that? No, I truly so believe funny. in that. I was gonna say, Dad. I truly, truly believe that if if dogs could flip you off, she would have been like, "Ha ha!" and flipping you off. I swear to God, that's how that dog was. I'm telling no, you. She, no, Misty was a good English sheepdog. I liked her. She was just a sheepdog. They, you know, they they're like dogs on with ADHD. You know what I mean? They just got attention <laughs> deficit disorder. That's all it is. You know what I mean? And and and, and I can't blame the dog. And and the only problem with with failing. Bill in uh, doggy training is you got to open your wallet and do it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're the cheap people that we are, you know, that's the way it is. But but Bubba Pass was flying car summa cum laude. He came out at her summa cum laude. He was he was just outstanding, and uh, yeah. it was it was really really a good thing. You know what I mean? So he could have been a therapy dog. I mean, he we at the time we I didn't know what a therapy dog was. You know what I mean? Nor did we, you know we none of us did. But he could have been a therapy dog. Easy, hands down, could have been a therapy dog. Did you guys take it personally when you failed? Did you think that that was on you? Do you think? Did you feel like you were the failure versus Buddy or Misty or whoever you took to training? No, no, I didn't feel like I was a failure. I mean, I I just knew that. It, Sheepdogs are crazy, you know what I mean, and so that's why it fit in so nicely with our family. You know what I mean. So <laughs> we are normal family. I can see that <laughs> normal, normal crazy family. Yeah, it's I love your hat. Talk, tell me about this top hat that you're wearing right now. That is super cool, and you well, look very handsome. I must say, no, get out of here, handsome man. I love a woman with low standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Me. <laughs> can, you, can you just imagine what family does? Not. You look very. Tell me about the top hat. I understand you wear these top hats all the time. Tell me well, about that. Not all the time. I, I I primarily focus on the Christmas season, but but I do wear okay. them. I mean, I I love the top hats, and the gray one is just you know it's just a nice nice subtle way to to walk into a room and get their attention without without being obnoxious. You know there's Box of Tiny Phil, you saw all those guys with the black hats, you know what I mean? That looks a little too formal. You got to have a tuxedo to wear a black hat. This one you can wear with your jeans or a, or a yeah. tuxedo, whatever you want to do. And the answer is I've always wanted one. So when I, when I, when I had the opportunity, um, when I was visiting Jesse, we found a really good hat store in Chicago. And, uh, and Miss Marion behind me, she said, what is the matter with you? What do you want a top hat for? You know what I mean? And I went ahead and bought the top hat. And then since then, since then, there have been many times where we go to a restaurant or something like that. And if I walk out and, and I don't walk up with her, she's heard people say, hey, check out the guy with the top hat. He looks cool. You know what I mean? And I say, ah, you know, <laughs> it's a good hat. I, it. I love it. it it's, um... It's outstanding without being outspoken. How's that? <laughs> I love that. Yep. Welcome, welcome to my world. Yep. So, and welcome this to my is world. One of about a hundred and so hats of mine. Yeah. You have a hundred and so hats? Oh, yeah. easily. You must easily. have a big closet. Well, I got them stuffed yeah, in a bunch of closets. All over the place. <laughs> all over the place. So. Yep, my dad collects hats. My mother collects books. My mom yeah. can open up her own library. Yes, literally. Absolutely. Actually, yeah. between the what's the favorite book? What's the favorite book that you have, Miss Marion? What's that? What's your, what's what's your, your favorite? favorite book? I have quite a few. Uh, uh, you know, because I, I love mysteries, and, but I don't like going gory mysteries are like you know he was shot he was stabbed you know or he got poisoned yeah. so but um joyful she, she, 
She's looking for the perfect way to get rid of me. Yeah. Never get caught. <laughs> I think some of your traits have passed down to your daughter. <laughs> I, my mother is probably, out of all of us in the family, my mom is probably the biggest animal lover out of all of us. I mean, when I say the biggest animal lover out of all of us, I remember when we were driving up to Maine as a child, and I remember there's a stretch going up to my Aunt Mary's house that for some reason frogs go across the roads. Do you know that stretch, Mom? Yep. There's a stretch that the frogs all come on the road. I remember my mom stopping in the middle of the road and getting out of the car and having us kids get out of the car so we could shoo the frogs off the road so they didn't get run over. Did you see a frog? With frogs? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Seriously. I mean, we're kids in the middle of a Maine in the, on a road trying to get, move the frogs off. And then when we lived in Colorado, she hates snakes. Sorry guys that like it, but she hates snakes. And I remember she would go out if they catch something, she'd go out there and she would, she would spray the snake down to release the, whatever they caught so she could rescue them. And I'm like, they need to eat mom. She's like, they're not eating on my yard. You talk about the two cats she had in Colorado. She she brought them to Jasper and Tyrone. That was yes. the two cats. Yeah, they they yeah. were. I, I got to hear it. I'm not a cat person, but they were two of the coolest cats because they we, we would we would go out there in the morning. We just open the door. They leave the house and go, and they'd be gone all day long. They would always bring something back, but they would be gone all day long. And in the afternoon, you go open the door and you holler, Jasper and Tyrone. And they would come back in. And at night, they would stay in the house. But they were gone all day long, so they didn't have to worry about them. But, except but the, for the winter. They except, did not like going out in the snow. And, and stuff what, like what what Jesse's talking about was there was at least one time where where one of the cats came back with a little baby snake. And it was probably a rattler. And this is probably what she brought back. You know what I mean? So there was always something going on. Always going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bubba, I think, we, brought back an ostrich egg one day. Was it it Bubba or was it Tanya? It was Bubba. Yeah, but we were like, don't know where that came from. That was Bubba. Well, what kind of of cats? My mom, my my mom and dad love cats. After after our standard poodle Jacques passed away, my dad basically said no more dogs. You know, because it hurt. I think it hurt him so much. So then they actually started getting cats, and she loved. Maine Coon cats and um, Siamese, and so she had a Maine. They had a Maine Maine Coon cats, yeah. buddy. Yep. They were big. Jasper and Tyrone yeah. were called pound pound kittens. We went to the we went down to the pound and picked up Jasper and Tyrone, yeah. and then <clears throat> you and yep. her, you and her were the ones that got those cats, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do it well. And then and then um after Bubba died, it was the same thing. My parents were like, no more dogs, because Bubba yeah. Bubba crushed No more them. animals. So, I said no more animals. No more animals. Anyway, for my mom's birthday about four years ago, I yeah. my mom yeah. I, brought, I brought my mom a set of kittens. <laughs> so they have two oh my kittens. God. Now. They have they have uh Lacey and Leon. I brought her, I brought my mom kittens. So they and they're pound kittens too, but they're really it once got oh, uh, One's a steel point. It's a steel point. It was a, I got him from the pound and then she's got Lacey as a tabby, a gray tabby. She's pretty. Wow. As opposed to a chia pet, you got two kittens. Uh Uh-huh. Why not? You know? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just drop off animals at people's houses. (laughs) That's a good thing. Yeah, I know. I know. know. Yeah. You have to call your brother sometime and ask him about the dog you dropped off at his place, man. (laughs) Yep, dropped a dog off at my brother's house. Adopted one for my nephew. <laughs> uh huh. Brought a I brought a bearded dragon to my niece's house last year for her birthday. Oh yeah, I bring animals. <laughs> Ooh, pets is presents. We can talk about that. <laughs> pets is presents. Yep. I bring heartbeats. I bring yeah heartbeats. <laughs> yep. Heartbeats. I bring heartbeats. So yep. Thank so. God. Yeah. What else? Anything else you want to share, Dad, before we let you go? I I got some stories, but some of them aren't suitable for air. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's good to know. Thank you. You know, you guys, first of all, I just want to 
I love you all. It, it, I have gotten to know you as our listening audience has gotten to know you through Jessica in this on this podcast. And I just want to thank you for for being on with us. Um, I appreciate you guys. You know, coming from me, I miss my mom and dad very terribly. So having that beautiful relationship with your parents and having them still around, how amazing is that? And how beautiful is that? I just, I love that. I love, I just love how much fun you guys have. Uh, we we, we try do real hard. that. That's, yeah, I was going to say, we do do that. That's funny. We laugh hard when we get together. You know, I, I know. Yeah. you can. I we appreciate you allowing us to be on a thing, and uh, and while while we 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 have loved animals all of our life, we have reached the point where I'd like to slow down on animals, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> but but we appreciate you being no more. Hard. <laughs> no more heartbeats. You got there. enough heartbeats. Yeah, yeah, you got enough heartbeats, heartbeats right now. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for letting us be on your podcast and and just just being a part of this amazing thing, this amazing journey that my daughter has been on um, through her life and now where she's at right now. We just think is we're blessed, she's blessed, and you're blessed, and 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 hopefully we can reach down and touch uh, touch more people. Okay, I don't know what else to say. You know, okay. <laughs> go Moab. <laughs> Oh, you know, yes, yes, yes. We all need to go to Moab. Absolutely. Anytime. Going to Moab. That's going to be anybody our new tagline. Go. Going to Moab. <laughs> anybody, anybody wants to go, you got to call me first and I'll tell you the right places to go. Been all over that place for a lot, a lot of years. Okay. He loves Moab. And that's, he goes yeah. motorcycle riding, but if you want to go bike riding there, you could do it or camping. He knows how to do it all. Trust me. Oh, so. wow. Love it. Go ahead, Dad. Can you shut us off or do we have to shut ourselves off here? Oh, we're going to do it. All right. There you go, Trisha. There's my dad. <laughs> I love him. I, I I tell you what, I am an adopted member of your family. I know that I'm your wife, but I am officially replacing Joe, and I am going to be sliding on in into that category. So I Love him, and your mom is super sweet too. And what fun, I mean, what fun pair? What pair? I mean, they're just fun. What fun I, parents? Yeah, I like that. We had a normal childhood, and I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not a monkey. <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. What? What? How does that happen? <laughs> I I remember that's. We were at a we were at a conference one one night, and there was about. 15, 20 of us sitting around a big table and we were having cocktails one evening and they were like, what's something that nobody would ever know anything about you? And I was like, my mom got bit by a monkey while I was in her belly. You should have seen everybody's face go, wait, what? And I'm like, true fact, can't lie. And they were like, what? Well, that my wife like, some of them, Jessica, I mean, really, there, <laughs> there's something going on there. I'm like that may be why I came out blonde. I mean, everybody in my house had brown hair except for me. I came out a toehead. I'm like, maybe that's why I was blonde. Who knows? It explains a lot of problems I have. I don't know what to that say. A delight, and I love mm. his top hat and how how, how, how many hats he's a he has a ton. Oh my yeah, god. Uh huh. He wears them all the time. He's got a black one. He's that one. He's got newsboy hats. He's got a couple cowboy hats. He's got a banjo. I'm surprised he didn't take out the banjo and start playing for you. I would have loved that. <laughs> yep. He's he's just Leroy is his own. So now you got the flavor of Leroy. So you get it when I tell you those little stories about him. He, you get the whole flavor now. I do. I do. And you can tell how much he just loves and adores you. And I love mm -hmm seeing that. So that was just, that was so nice. That was just mm. wonderful. And I loved how they talked about, you know, animals and their journey with pets and how, you know, and, and the many animals that they had, you know, yeah. and Bubba, was it Bubba? Yeah, Bubba. Bubba yep. the dog. Yeah. Bubba. Yeah, Bubba I, is the best. Oh, I love that. I love that. It has just been, it's been a good week. And I'm it so glad been. we like ended things with him this week and just like, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, we, he's, yeah, he's a character. <laughs> That's all I have to say, but you get, you see where I get my quirkiness from. Mm -hmm. I, 
I do yep. for sure. I did not fall far far from that tree. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So Jessica, what do we have coming up here in the, in the not so distant future? What do you think? Um, well, I know we've got, I know what March is, but I've got, we're hopefully, hopefully going to be interviewing, hopefully in the next week or so, we're going to be talking to um, the Chili Project folks. And we've got a couple other big ones coming up. So oh, in March, we have a little series that we're going to, I'm working on right now. So, but I'll know more in, in the next week. So hopefully from then I will know, but this is our Valentine's Day episode because, you know, by, by next week, it'll be Valentine's Day. It had to already happen. So this is our Valentine's Day episode. The hearts or at rather uh, cu Cupid crashing into a, um, perhaps into a wall with me. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no. Hey, you know what? Half the world can be married and still be single for Valentine's Day. You know, I feel about this that. Is true. This is true. It yeah. is the month of love. And the month of love is that we're just, you know, focusing on so many things that bring love to us. And, and yes. I'm glad you brought your dad on with us. Yes, 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 yes. So, so yes. So with that, I want to say, Trisha, how do you treat your pets like family? I treat every pet I come in contact with like family with love and kisses and plenty of affection. There you go. Awesome. Well, then and we'll see you guys next week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Pets Are Family. You can find us on all the channels now. Yes, all the channels now. So make sure you share us with your friends, your families, and your coworkers, and anybody that has a pet. Make sure you like us. Give us your feedback. Tell us if anything that you want us to talk about. All that fun stuff. You can reach me at Jessica at PetsOurFamily.net or Trisha at PetsOurFamily.net. Thank you for everything that you guys do. But make sure you like us, subscribe, um, check us out on YouTube. You can always see what we're up to. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, all of the people that support us. We love every one of you and we can't thank you enough. And remember, check out Moose's March. Moose'sMarch.com. M-O-O-S-E-S. M-A-R-C-H dot com. Come check us out. Talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next week. Bye.